Hey there everybody and welcome to another tutorial. This one is about the delay effector in Cinema 4D and what it can do. So this will be the final result. I'm making it loop over and over and notice how B-O-U-N-C just kinda comes up, bounces and settles in an organic fashion. And uh, this is this is how you would do it. Okay, let's dive right in. Uh, this will we'll make a new one. Uh, first things first, let's make a mo uh, a mo text, which is under MoGraph. Click that. Let's zoom out. Let's move. Let's also go down to here where it says left. Put it to middle, so it's in the absolute middle of the entire scene. And let's just uh, let's type in bounce B O U N C. Um, alright, so next what I would do is pick a font. So the font that I chose was called Kilogram. You can you can find that online at dafont.com, I believe. I'm not sure where I got it, but it looked really good for this example, so I grabbed it. Kilogram bounce. And notice how the, the default uh, kerning is is uh, pretty tight. All these letters are pretty tight, and you don't want that because when the, when the letters are coming up, they're gonna go through each other. Unless you have dynamics, which we're not gonna deal with. So what I would do is I change the horizontal spacing to 11. Uh, I'll just make it even 10. And then next, I will go to caps. Click on cap, make it affiliate. Click on cap, make it affiliate for both sides, this side and this side. Um, then I'm going to hit constrain. So what constrain does is, when you usually put affiliate cap, it bulges it bulges out the sides uh, every which way, and constrain keeps it that that size. It's it's wonderful when you when you're working with fonts and logos, especially logos, because clients usually don't like you to mess with their logos. Okay, so the next thing is. Uh, let's set up the scene real quick. Uh, if you guys remember, I made a preset last time. If not, you can look at the previous uh, videos, uh, how I did it. So you go down here, make a load preset, my HD preset, click this. Let's get rid of and occlusion. Let's get rid of the saving and multipassing. We don't need any of that. Into aliasing, make it best. Um, and then we will, for the, uh, the timeline will go only be 40 frames. That's only a second, second uh, animation. And then click this, Control V, go all the way down to here, go to view, make it 80%, make it red again. And then let's just zoom out a bit. All right. Oh yeah, and another thing, what I what I'm gonna do is I'm going back into the caps. I'm only gonna make them a centimeter. Five is a little, uh, it's a little too much. So, so next, what we're gonna do is make it editable. Press suppress C, and you notice that it was a MoGraph text, which is this. When you press C, it turns into a group. And what it does is it takes everything and makes them splines with extrude nerves. Here's the spline and here's the extrude nerves. So what we're going to need are all of these B-O-U-N-C um, the, the uh, extrude nerves. We're going to click and drag them out. We're just going to go ahead and delete all those those uh, those groups that, that were made. We don't need them. Um, so next what we're going to do is uh, let's throw in the uh, the delay effector. And if you remember, when you were going to quickly throw a cloner in there, it has the effectors tab. Notice that uh, extrude nerves don't. Neither do, neither do splines. Neither do groups. So what? We're, so what? We're, what? What are we going to do? Uh, we will go under MoGraph. I'm going to click this so I can drag it over here because I'm going to uh, I'm going to duplicate it quite a bit. Um, and we're going to use fracture objects. So what a fracture object does is, is basically a group, but you can you can throw in effectors and you can throw in um, 
uh, just effectors really. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to hold down Alt, it's Option on Mac, we're going to click on uh, Fracture. So then we're going to go to the next one, hold down Alt or Option, hit on Fracture. Next one, next one, next one. So if you notice what it's doing is it's kind of making it it's making it a uh, I'm going to delete that. It's, it's making it a a child of each fracture. So we're going to name each fracture E C N U O B. So it goes B O U N C bounce. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to the effectors tab in the fracture object. Notice it, it's the same layout as the cloner and we're going to throw the, the, the delay effector in there in each fracture. N C E. Okay so now you have the effector on every single every single uh, fracture object. So we're, we're, what we're going to do is get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. And we're going to look at the delay effector right now. So, with the, uh, so the main things that we're going to look at are not the deformer, not the falloff, not any of these. We're going to look at the effector right here. So this is the strength. So if you if you uh, heighten the strength, it, it will come up and bounce just a little bit and settle. If you lower it, it'll go way up, way down, way up, way down, and then eventually settle. So default is on blend mode. So what blend mode is what it, what blend mode does is let's say you have it start here and end here, and it it's just the tween. That's all it is. Um, it's kind of boring. I'm not sure why blend or even as even in here. Um, the only thing I I use the delay effector for is spring. So we're going to select spring. Spring is exactly what it does. It springs it up and down or left or right or whichever way you're actually animating. Okay. So when now what we're going to have to do is highlight each of the extrude ner nerves press holding I'm holding down control in each of the fracture objects and I'm going to make a keyframe. Let's bring that to I think 20, no maybe 15. 15. And then I'm going to drag them all the way down here. Notice and then make another keyframe. Notice that they made the trajectories but you don't they haven't even moved. That's that's because uh there there's dynamic uh the delay effector is this it creates this dynamic um uh, object and dealing with dynamics you don't you don't really know unless you do this you just kind of scrub around and then that's what that's where it's gonna begin so we're gonna move it down some more make a keyframe again okay and we're just gonna press F8 notice it goes up and settles so what we should do is make it 10 let's try that Junk. Junk. we're gonna make it a little bit faster. Boom. Boom. Um, it's faster than the um, the example I gave you, but this is just for v uh, viewing purposes. And my phone is going off. Hold on a second. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to make a camera. And then we're gonna hit this button to select the camera, and we're gonna make it zero zero. Let's hit this button so we can see all the views. We'll go to quick shading, go to perspective, back it up a bit, and you notice it's way off. That's okay. We'll bring it down zero. We're gonna zero it out zero zero zero. Um, and then we're gonna back it up. We're gonna move it up something like that. So now if we press F8, boop, maybe it's maybe now it's 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 too much. So let's let's go to the timeline. 
which is the uh, uh, here uh, the, the keyframe editor in the in the curve editor right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all these keyframes and move them to 10. And now we want it to go B O U N C E. So I press spacebar, and oops, I don't need to press spacebar. We're just going to move these keyframes. So I think I moved it three, three over, two, two over, one, two, and then the rest were just one, one, one. That way, there's a longer time between the first three than the last three. And then we're going to press F8 real quick. Bloop, and there it is. Okay, and then the next thing what we're going to do is light and texture the scene real quick. If you if you remember the uh, where is it? In a picture viewer. If you remember the animation, it's blue and it looks nice and and all of, and has a reflection, which I'll show you how to do that. And it's it's easy and uh, okay. So now what we're going to do is add some textures. So we'll, we'll make this texture, uh, we'll call this text. We're going to make another texture, I'm double clicking down here, and call this BG. Make another texture and call this reflection. And then the text, uh, so we're going to go to the reflection first since it's easiest. 100% luminance, you can get rid of specular. Excuse me, specular and color. You don't need those. <clears throat> the BG. Uh, we're, we'll, we'll touch. We'll do that right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under the environmental tab, our environmental menu, and click background. And now what I'm going to do is make it interactive. Make it cover the entire thing. And then I'm going to click and drag this texture on the back on the background, and then I'm going to double click that texture, and we're going to make that fake vignette that you saw. So when you click on on texture, go to gradient, <clears throat> and then click on here under gradient, go to rig, oops, oops, go to where is it circular, and now I'm going to make it white, white on semi gray, yeah, something like that. Okay, and then the last tag is the texture tag, and for the texture tag, we're gonna put it on all of these fracture objects. So let's just go ahead and do that now. It's probably gonna make it super white. Yep. Okay. And then uh, leave the specular. Uh, we're gonna change the color to a blue. I think I just kept kept it like that. Oh, no. Did I not accept it? Okay. Okay. So now it's a blue, and we're going to throw a reflection on it with a Fresnel, but we're going to bring down the Fresnel a little bit. Alright. So the next thing, what we're going to do is we're going to add some lights. We're just going to add a simple lights. We're going to add a backlight. I'm going to bring it down a bit so you can see the highlights down there. And I'm going to duplicate that light. I'm holding down control, and it is uh, the, I forget which button that is for Mac. And then make this light go down here. And we're going to make, we're going to copy it and then bring it over here. So I'm not putting any of these lights directly in the center like that. I could, but I'm not. The point the point of doing that is so you can actually see the rim light, uh, the rim lights. Um, let's move that a bit uh, like that, something like that. Okay. And don't forget to save it. I call mine springy text. We're going to call this springy text tutorial. All right, and then uh, almost, we're almost done. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a disk. Bring this up. We're going to throw the beat. We're going to throw the reflection texture onto the disk, which is just flat white. 
we're going to make this 90 degrees and move this up a bit. We're also going to make this edible, press C, boom, and then we're going to stretch the sides. And you're like, now you're thinking, what, Tyler, um, now I've got this big gaping thing in the middle of my, my scene. What, what's, what's going on? So what we're going to do is we're going to keep that there, but we're actually going to disable it from rendering. So you right click here, right click, go to Cinema 4D tags, go to composition. The composition ta uh, tag, I'm pr I might do a full on tutorial about what all of these things are and what you can do. You, ba you can basically exclude things from reflecting or extrude, exclude lights. You can only do shadows or, or, or transparencies or reflections or you can have object buffers. It's amazing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to delete, uh, get rid of shadows, camera, CG, uh, AO, uh, ambient occlusion, we don't need it, uh, transparency. So n notice it's still here. You can see this, but it's actually not rendering. So now we're going to move it up. I'm going to click out, and we're just going to play it. And there we go. Um, you can also just disable it from the viewpoint, like the viewport, like that. Boom, and then it should look like this. Uh, it's a little, little, little off. My my blue is a little darker, but you you get the hint. Press spacebar to play. There we go. Do 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 do. All right. So that is the delay effector in Cinema 4D and what you could do with it. Uh, now you you don't you don't have to do left, right, up, down, um, and all that. You can actually spin it. You can you could spin it. You can size it up so so it comes so it goes from a small thing to a big thing. Um, are you well? Also, let's play around with the strength real quick before I get out of here. So what the strength is is it's ma uh, when you lower it, it's making it look more linear, and when you increase it, it does that, like it's it's riding on a wave. And the, and the great thing is you can you can change it on the fly. So if you're like, oh, I don't like that in the middle of the animation, you can just change it. Let's make it 100%. It's probably gonna wet. Yeah, it's gonna be weird. So there you go. That's that is the, the the delay effector and what it can do in Cinema 3D. I'm going to save it. I hope you guys really like this tutorial. Um, follow me if you like. Uh, if, if, you, if you really like my uh, tutorials, you can donate. It's a, there's, a bo there's a button at the bottom of my VMO page and uh, I, I, I would love your support. And thank you for watching. See you next week.